For more than a year, Blade Runner 2049 director Denis Villeneuve and star Ryan Gosling have been working under the cover of CIA-level stealthiness. On the film's Budapest set, copies of the script for the long-awaited sequel to Ridley Scott's 1982 sci-fi neo-noir classic were held so closely, literally locked away in safes when not in use, that many crew members never laid eyes on one. Actors would sign out their sides on the day they were shooting a scene and be required to sign them back in before going home, lest the merest hint of a spoiler leak. On a late September afternoon, with the film's October 6 release just days away, Villeneuve and Gosling sat in a windowless conference room in a hotel in downtown Los Angeles, preparing to finally let audiences in on their secret, and wondering what they will make of it. When you make a movie as a filmmaker, it's like you bring people in a boat and you say, we will discover America together, said Villeneuve, the French-Canadian director of such films as 2015's crime thriller Sicario and the 2016 cerebral sci-fi hit Arrival. Then there's fog and storms and icebergs, and you just pray that the boat won't sink. After that, I have no idea how the world will react. A new Blade Runner, played by Ryan Gosling discovers a secret that could plunge what's left of society into chaos. The discovery leads him on a quest to find a former Blade Runner, played by Harrison Ford, who has been missing for 30 years. We always deeply respected the first movie, for me, this movie was a kind of love letter to Ridley Scott and his team. Denis Villeneuve adapted from Philip K. Dick's 1968 novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? The original film. The story of hard-bitten Los Angeles cop Rick Deckard, Harrison Ford, who works as a Blade Runner hunting down renegade androids called Replicants, polarized critics and was considered a box office disappointment. But in the years since its release, Blade Runner has steadily grown in stature, and its gritty, rain-soaked vision of a future in which the boundaries between humans and machines have blurred has cast a vast influence over the pop culture landscape from The Matrix to Westworld. Over the years, various ideas for sequels or prequels were floated, but none got far until 2011, when Alcon Entertainment and Scott began developing a Blade Runner follow-up in earnest. Scott, who initially planned to direct the film, phoned original Blade Runner screenwriter Hampton Fancher to see if he wanted to kick around ideas, a call Fancher received with a mix of joy and terror. I was very excited but very fraught because I had one little idea, said Fancher, who, back in the mid-1980s, had contemplated a Blade Runner sequel that would unfold in Moscow. One little idea, that's not even a fig leaf. But then I got a couple of little ideas and then three little ideas and then we were off to the races. Set three decades after the events of the original film, which took place in 2019. Blade Runner 2049 centers on a young LAPD Blade Runner, played by Gosling, who stumbles onto a secret that leads him on a quest to find the long-lost Deckard. Beyond that, revealing almost anything about the film would bring down the wrath of the spoiler gods, though it's safe to say that the franchise's vision of the future hasn't gotten any rosier. Then again, as 2049 co-writer Michael Green points out, Reality today can feel pretty dystopian as it is, it's funny, the way the world is right now, you can look at the 2019 of the original Blade Runner as having gone from brutalist to optimistic. That would be a perfectly fine outcome for the 2017 we live in now. Sharing the easy rapport of two fellow Canadians who fought side by side in the Hollywood trenches on a film fans have been waiting 35 years to see, Villeneuve, 49 and Gosling, 36, sat down with the Times to discuss the pressures and the possibilities of revisiting a sci-fi classic. Dennis, when you first heard that there was a Blade Runner sequel in the works, you were initially hesitant to sign on to direct. Why? Villeneuve, I wasn't sure how to feel about the idea. I thought it was so gutsy, such a dangerous, beautiful idea, or a bad idea, I don't know. Myself. I think there are movies like Blade Runner that are unique and that have a specific place in cinema history and that we should not touch them. The idea that Ridley Scott was behind the project with Hampton Fancher, that was really triggering my curiosity. 
but I wasn't sure if it was a good idea, until I read the screenplay. When I read the screenplay, then I understood why. At first I declined the invitation because I was committed to do arrival and I wasn't sure. And they came back and they said they were ready to wait for me. I said to myself, if I say no, somebody else will do it, and I don't want somebody else to, it up. I knew that even if the chances of success were super narrow, I won't.